That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just when you thought you got to handle things. All right. Okay, so let's learn. All right, so uh, so this is Parashat. There's, uh, there's a few mitzvahs, but... Um, I figured we might as well talk about the hardest one. So, uh, Paraduma, there we go. So, in the, in the beginning of Parashat Chukas, as we know, Zoy Chukas the Torah. So, the Torah tells us about the, uh, the concept of Paraduma. A person is uh, Tommy Mace, right? And because of that, he can't uh, you know, go into Beis Amigdash or, you know, eat uh, Truma, eat Karbanas, whatever the situation is. So, he wants to become Tahar. There's a process of uh, Paraduma. You process the Paraduma, you sprinkle the Paraduma. Over the course of seven days, he becomes tahar. Now, the truth is, there's um, it's machlokes in the tenayim, it's machlokes tenayim, and uh, it's machlokes amraim as well. Whether there's an actual mitzvah to become tahar. So let's say let's say you're a Yisrael, for example, and there's nothing really compelling you uh, to become tahar. You never, you know, you you're not you're not by base amigdash and so on. You don't need it. Uh, we'll see soon. Even even in situations where you have to travel to the base of the there could be ways around it. So you don't you don't want to become tar if you have a mitzvah to become tar. So this is machlokas tanoim, it's machlokas amaraim. We pass in the halacha that no, there's no obligation to become tar. If you so choose, then this is the process to do it with the paraduma. You don't have to become tar. There's 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 only to actually have to use the paraduma. Um, there's only two scenarios. Yeah, there's only two scenarios where a person would have to go through the process of of of, um, of Hazos Paraduma of being sprinkled by the Paraduma, and that was a Kain Gadol before Yom Kippur, seven days before Yom Kippur. Mafrish and Kain Gadol. The Mishnah says at the beginning of Seches Yuma that the Kain Gadol is separated for seven days before Yom Kippur to prepare for the Avodah, and we learn from Sukkim that part of that. Was that that he had azos may paro that the uh, paradum was sprinkled upon him during those seven days, so that he couldn't get away with not going through. So that that, that you have to have, and also there's another halacha we'll see soon that any paraduma um, to be processed. So the kain that per, that processes the paraduma, he himself has to be sprinkled with the par, with the preceding paradumas, right? So, so they find a new paraduma, whatever it is, but they have uh, we'll see soon they have backup. The ashes from previous, from this, you know, old uh, paradumas. So the kain, the kain, or it was usually a kain gadol. The kain gadol that processed the paraduma. This current one had to be sprinkled by the previous ones. Again, that's another scenario that he had to go through hazos paraduma. But uh, the average kain that becomes tame. So we'll see. You know, if other kahanim take up his his job, Yisraelim as well. So, but uh, those scenarios of a kain gadol or a kippur or a kain processing uh, a new paraduma. They have to go through the Tahara of Paraduma as well. So let's uh, so we'll investigate a little bit. You know, Kameis is and just uh, you know looking looking into the cracks a little bit. This mitzvah of Paraduma. So our mokhet number one is first we'll go a little bit in the halacha to understand exactly what the, the if this is a mitzvah. In fact, I mean, there's, a, there's certainly halachas of Paraduma, but is it a mitzvah to have a Paraduma? So we'll, look, we'll see that in Allah, and then we'll see where it takes us. Those that have very good memories will remember that I spoke about this. I, I, I realized this after I prepared it. I spoke about this Parshas uh, Chukas last year. So, Ein Beis Mendesh Bloy Chiddush, there'll be new things, but uh, if you have good memories, it'll be, a, it'll be, it'll be familiar. So, Maramukha number one is, a, again, the Ramam and Sefer Mitzvahs. Mitzvahs has say Kuf Yud Gimel. So, the Ramam says like this, he, he does count Paradum as a mitzvah, and the way he sort of establishes it and, and uh, you know and 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 puts it in Sefer Mitzvahs is the following: Shetzivanu la says paraduma that we're commanded to make and to process the paraduma. Kedeshia for a mezuman l'misha yitzdarach elav l'taharas tumas meis in order that its uh, ashes should be prepared and ready for anyone that needs it. Again, like I said before, most scenarios you don't have to use it, but if you want it, it should be available. My Shomer, as the Pasuk says, in Parshish Chukas, V'hoi Adas B'nei Yisrael. But the Paraduma, it says in Pasuk, should be 
as an aid, it should be as a testimony, it should be an aid is something that, that is. So it should be there. And as a Kalisal should have a paraduma. If one is available, we should process it. And again, says the Rambam in order that it should be available for use. And that's the way the Rambam puts it in Sefer Mitzvahs. That's the Rambam Sefer Mitzvahs. That's the Sefer Chinuch. That there's a mitzvah to process the paraduma in order that it should be available for use. That's the way the Rambam puts it. Now, what's interesting is, I didn't bring this down, but it's interesting in the um, in, in, in Mishnah Torah, in the beginning of Hilchas Paraduma, so the, I mentioned this once, that before every section of Halacha, the Rambam chazes over very quickly, like one or two lines, the mitzvahs that are going to be discussed in that section. So right before Hilchas Paraduma, so the Rambam says, okay, we're, you know, Hilchas Paraduma is coming now, and uh, contained in that are two mitzvahs. One mitzvah is, the Rambam calls it uh, Din Tumas Meis, in other words, is uh, not that a person should become Tamei. Din Tumas Meis, we spoke about this once in one of the mitzvahs, that according to the Rambam, there are certain things that are counted in mitzvahs, not because you have to do them, or to stay away from them, but concepts are also counted in mitzvahs. This is, sugis in Torah could be counted in 613. There's a sugya that's called Tumas Meis, right? And the halachas that, that revolve around Tumas Meis, that's the mitzvah, in other words, to, uh, to acknowledge the existence of such a sugya, but not necessarily that you have to do anything, just... Tumas Meis. So says the Rambam, in Hilchas Paraduma, you're going to have two mitzvahs discussed. Din Tumas Meis and Din Paraduma. That's the way the Rambam puts it. Din Paraduma. Which is interesting. That's a different way of describing the mitzvah than what he says in Sefer Mitzvahs. So again, in Sefer Mitzvahs, it's not just the Sugya Paraduma, the concept. There's an actual activity that we're commanded to, be, to embark in, which is to process the Paraduma. The Rambam in, in Mishnah Torah seems to maybe change his mind or change it a little bit that the mitzvah is not to force us to do anything if you don't want to process it. But the the sugya, paraduma, the concept that, that, that if you do process it, this is the way to do it and this is how it works, that's the mitzvah. But I'll put a upon him the way the Rambam in Sefer Mitzvah is putting it, that there is an actual obligation. The obligation is to prepare the ashes uh, for, for use if people need it. Now what's interesting is, is in Maramukkah number three, the, um, I'm sorry, Maramukkah number two, the, we have another language, not from the Rambam, but from the Rabbeinu Sajigayin. Rabbeinu Sajigayin also wrote the Sefer Mitzvahs, and his, his Sefer Mitzvahs is much more uh, terse. But the language that he uses is as follows. Again, Minya Mitzvahs to the Rasag, he says like this, Upara l'mishmeres b'teder. Right away, it might not seem too different. We'll see in a second. Uparla Mishmeres B'teda says that says Rabbi Nisajigain that one of the mitzvahs, one of the six thirteen, is to have a paraduma always uh, uh, mishmeres that should be uh, shamur, it should be designated. Uh, paraduma, the ashes of a paraduma, should always be designated and set. The mishmeres <laughs> What is what is Rabbi Nisajigain referring to? So the background is as follows. If you take a look at Marmokin number three. So there's a Mishnah in Meseches Par. The, uh, there's a last Mishnah in the third parak of Meseches Par, Parak Gil, Mishnah Yid Aleph. So the Mishnah over there, the whole parak over there is talking about how to, again, processing the Paraduma. And at the very end it says, okay, when you have all the ashes ready, so it says in the Mishnah like this, Chol Kinoisei that the ashes of any Paraduma were divided into three, three parts, three thirds. Echad Naisin Bechayel. One third was placed in the in the base of Middash, an area that's called the Chayel. The Echa Naisin Bahar Mishcha. One was outside the base of Middash itself, was was held by the, the Har Mishcha, a mountain opposite the base of Middash. The Echa Rai Mishchak Luchal Mishmaris, and the following, the last third was divided amongst all the Mishmaris, all the, the all the Kahanim that were on duty in the base of Middash throughout the year, that they were in charge of the last third. So you have these three thirds. One is a third is in the Chayel. A third is in the Har Mishcha, and one is distributed amongst the Kahanim that happen to be working in the base of Megdash throughout the, throughout the time. So, and okay, so that's what the Mishnah says. Now, the Mishnah doesn't explain what each third is for. So, the Rishonim bring down from the Tesefta, but this is how it says Marmachan number four, the Rash, the Rash Mishans, this Pirish, one of the Rishonim, so uh, from Ashkenaz. So, he, uh, one of the Rishonim, uh, the Rash's commentary to the Mishnah. So he says as follows: The third, the uh, the final third that the mission records, the last third that was divided amongst all the kahanim, that was the one that was in use 
for Klal Yisrael, Lo Yisrael Maz Mimenu. That was the third that any regular Yisrael that comes to base in that wants to become Tar with the Paraduma, it was that third that was used. Okay. Zeshenit in Bahar Mishcha. What about the, again, the, 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 the other third that was kept by the Har Mishcha? What was that for? Hayu Kahanim Azimbay. That was something, says the Rash, that the Kahanim used. So, in other words, if Yisrael needs the Paraduma, it used one third. If, uh, if Kahanim needed the Paraduma, they would use the other third. Zesh and Nitin Bechayel, and the other third, the first one mentioned in the Mishnah, that was kept in the Chayel, that wasn't for any particular use, that was just kept. It was just watched. It was just, it was just sat there. Shenemar, and it's Gzer Sakasov, that uh, at least a section of the Paraduma ashes. Should just be a mishmeres. It should just be watch. It just be sitting. Shenemar v'haisel adas b'nei Yisrael lemishmeres. That it should be <coughs> again an edus for Kal Yisrael and a mishmeres. That's what the Rosh says, and that's again. This is not. He's not making this up. This is based on how the Tesefta explains the Mishnah. So going back, this is the Pashtas. This is what Rabbeinu Sadjigon is referring to. Upar lemishmeres beteder. Where Rabbeinu Sadjigon is describing the mitzvah of Paraduma. But he's specifically singling out that the mitzvah of the process of paraduma is specifically for that third that's just supposed to sit there and not and not necessarily be used. In other words, the way the way the Rasajagan seems to explain the mitzvah is that I mean I guess we'll see soon. But uh, the, the 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 he he, he would seem to be the the, the 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 ashes of the paraduma that are functional, that are actually used for whether it be Yisraelim or Kahanim, that is not counting as the mitzvah. The specific part of the paraduma that's counted as the mitzvah is a specific third of the ashes that are, that are never used, which is also very strange. But the whole point of the paraduma is that it should bring tahara. So for whatever reason, there's exerse akasav that there should be a third of ashes that are not in use. That's exerse akasav. But to say that that's the ikra mitzvah, it's a little bit strange. So, so the thing is like this. Was that third that was kept in the Chayel, that was Lemishmeris, was it Taka never used at all? Again, the way the Rosh, we, we saw the Rosh in a moment ago in Marwakim number four, it sounds like, yeah, I mean, you call, the Yisraelim use one third, Kahanim use another third, and that's pretty much all you got. So what's left for the final third? So the truth is, there is a Machlekes Rishayim regarding that final third. Was there any usage of it? So the Rosh himself, in Marwakim number five, or the Rash in, in the first mission of that Parak Paragimel. So the first mission over there references a halacha that I mentioned before, which is that uh, seven, that um, that the halacha is that a kayan that's processing a new paraduma, he himself has to be sprinkled with all the ashes of, of every paraduma that came before it. So the Rash over there in that Mishnah is talking about like how do we have ashes from all the old paradumas? Like where you, uh, how, how do we make sure that we can uh, we can keep a trace of all of that. So it says the Rosh like this, Umazin olav kol shiva sayamim. Now, by the way, this halach is not only, this idea of, again, sprinkling the kayan with all the old paradumas, this is for the kayan that's making the new paraduma, and that's also true for the kayan gadol for Yom Kippur. So not only do the kayan gadol for Yom Kippur have to be sprinkled for seven days to make sure he's tar for Yom Kippur, he had to be sprinkled for seven days from all the paradumas that ever were. And so both the Kayin Gadol for Yom Kippur and the Kayin making the Paraduma have to go through this Tahara from all the old Paradumas. So says the, the Rash, Umaz in all of Kol Shiva Sayamim, the Kol Chatoy So that's a quote from the Mishnah, that you would, you would uh, sprinkle on the Paraduma, on, on, I'm sorry, on the Kayin Gadol, or the Kayin making the new Paraduma, from all the Chatois, from all the Paradumas that came before. We call paro para, says the Rosh. The Rosh is explained. Like, how do we make sure that we have uh, <coughs> leftovers from all the old paradumas? So we call paro para, how you nice think sas lemishmeres ben ha'efer. Says the Rosh, well, the way is, is because every single paraduma that was made, there was a section of it that was kept lemishmeres, that was kept watched and untouched. And so that was the supply that you were able to make sure that you could go back. That it could be, it could be centuries after the paraduma's process, but you know that you have a section of the paraduma that's kept intact. In other words, what the Rosh is referring to is that third that was kept in the Chayil, that wasn't for Yisraelim, and it wasn't for Kahanim, it was just to sit there as a Mishmeris, and says the Rosh, that was the third that you would then use for any Kohen Gadol every year, 
and for making a new paradumo because that's where you had a guaranteed supply of old paradumas. This is the sheet of the Rash and Rashi and himself as well. Maramaka number six, Rashi, Meseches Yuma, Daftal and Alf again. The Mishnah over there talks about the Kayan Gadol before Yom Kippur having to go through Paraduma, the Tower of Paraduma. And over there also the Gemara says, we call this, this idea that the Kayan Gadol had to be sprinkled with every preceding Paraduma. So says Rashi, we call Paro Paro Hayinaisin Ksasla Meshmeres Menefer Bechayim. He says specifically that the, that the way you had a paraduma from centuries ago is because, well, the third that was used for Yisraelim, that could get, that could get used up. The third for Kahana was get used up. But that third that was sitting in Mishmeris, it wasn't to be touched. And so, you, you, you know, to use it a little bit once a year for a Kohen Gadol, it's not going to use it up. And so, Mimela, that's what, uh, that's what he used to do. And that was the thing that was, the thing that was, always, that was always used. In other words, what comes out from this is, is that at least according to the Rash, and according to Rashi, this final third that was used, that was sitting in the Chayil for a Mishmeris, did have a use. Its use was, in fact, for the Kain Gadol for Yom Kippur, and any new Kain, any new Paraduma. And so that's, that's what comes out. So in other words, practically speaking, one third was for Yisraelim, one third was for Kahanim, and one third was for, again, before Yom Kippur, the Kain Gadol, and making a new Kain, and making a new Paraduma. Based on this, so we have a peerish on uh, the Sefer Mitzvahs of Rasaji going by Rav Yochum Fishel Perla. Remember Rav Fishel? Rav Fishel, he was one of the, he, it was an amazing story about it. He, uh, he was a Rav, you know, he was a genius of geniuses. But he was a, a Rav, like a little shtetl somewhere in Europe, you know. Mamish unknown, a little dwarf, mamish uh, nothing. And then he was working, you know, as a Rav in those places, he didn't have much, uh, he didn't have much, uh, it wasn't a hard, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't much work for him. I mean, he, you know, to prepare a Shabbos Hagadol Drosh, Shabbos Shuvah Drosh, he was a he was a genius. To answer Shaila is not a, such a big deal. That was pretty much the job. So he just sat and learned, and he produced the, these three thick volumes of a whole super commentary on Rav Sadji Goyin Sefer Mitzvahs. And it's not just on Rav Sadji Goyin Sefer Mitzvahs. It's called Tarkula. That's that's the it's it's on all it's on all of Tyre. And he like he printed it without and just it, it came on the scene of of the Torah world and it like took everyone by storm like never, no one ever heard of this uh, this rub in some little shtetl somewhere's mamish a guy of guy so eventually made he made with Eretz Yisrael he wrote others for him too so so he says like this so he's bothered with the question we said before that Rav Sajigayin again is categorizing the mitzvah of processing a paraduma and the language of Rav Sajigayin was upar l'mishmeres betadar indicating that the ikr mitzvah is to create is to process the paraduma and specifically the ashes that are going to be kept in the chayil for a mishmeris. So the question is, of all the ashes, that's the one that's not that's that, that's not in use. So the whole paraduma is to bring tahara. That's the that, those are the ashes that don't bring tahara. So what's the tachlis? Why would that? You know, if you want, it's exeris akasav, I understand, but that's the mitzvah. That's the ikr mitzvah. So based on the rash and based on Rashi, that no, even though it was it was it, was, it wasn't the most common of use, but it did have a function in terms of preparing the Kayin Gadol for Yom Kippur, and preparing the Kayin to make a new paraduma. says Rav Yechum Fil Shapur like this, Vim Kayin, Muvor. So it comes out from this, if you think about it, Shekol HaMukta Muktam B'Maila. So, so he, he points out, if you take a look at, if you go back to the third Maramakam, where the Mishnah in Mesechus Par is quoted, when it talks about dividing up the paraduma ashes into three parts, so the first third that's mentioned is Echad Naisim B'Chayil, Right, that was the one that was kept l'mishmeres. The echad nice and bar mishcha. That was the section that was kept for kahanim. The echad mishcha l'mishmeres, and the third one that was that was for all the, the kahanim to use for all of Klal Yisrael. So why does the Mishnah break it down in that order? Why mention the chayil first and then har mishcha and then the mishmeres? So says Yerucham Fisher like this: In came of worship, kolam oktem oktem amayla. The answer is the Mishnah is listing in order of mayla. The first third mentioned is the one that's the most chashev. Why? Because the third that's the most chashev was in fact the one that was kept in the chayel. Because that was the third. And as, and as it says in Ruchim, it's not the pshat that, that was just kept there and these are the things that we need it for. It was kept for these most chashev things. Most chashev things, preparing a kain of Yom Kippur and preparing a kain to make a new paradum. Vasheni, 
how you how you uh, how you by the second one in Cheshivas is going to be the second third that Kahanim used. And the third third in Cheshivas is going to be the final one that's used for all of Kla Yisrael. So says the Ruch official. So in other words, the reason why the Rasag says that the Iker Mitzvah is for the third in the Chayel is because that was the one that was used for the most Cheshiva things. The Gamnir, and he makes another point, not only was that third used for the most Cheshiva things, the Gamnir, it also would seem, the Iker Tzayr Chayefer, Hoyla Kahanam Gedoyla. That the main reason why you even really needed a paraduma was for those two primary things, making sure the kain gadol yom kippur is tar, and making sure the kain making the new paraduma is tar. Why? If an av- says, 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 he says something like this, because mishut kahanim had yaitim harbe hayim. Because if an, let's say an average kain becomes tamei, okay, so it, it, the, the world doesn't end. There's other kahanim that could take his place. The meizim hem nitma, and if some kain becomes tamei. You could find other kahanim to take his place. So having paraduma prepared to, to purify kahanim, you can live without it. One kind becomes tamay, another kind can take it, can, can take care of his avayda. The Yisraelim, and now he says a, a little cheshbon. He says even when it comes to Yisraelim, so also we can live without a paraduma. I, how can you live without a paraduma? Avol pishin eschay v'kulam kol shan alas is a pesach. Ayesol needs to bring karm pesach. Bring karm pesach. You have to be tar. Well, Allah like to eat it. This mitzvah be oil regal three times a year to go to beis hamikdash. Obviously, you have to be tar for that. So how could you get away with not having a paraduma for that? Nikol malkim. So he says kfar kasva taisus bepsachim. It's a sheet of taisus in meseches pesachim a chiddush. And many achrenim happens to be that they they question the source of this taisus, but taisus does say it. The misha ein lekarka patmi pesach umeriya. That if a Jew does not have any karka, doesn't mm-hmm. own any real estate, so then that such a Jew is putter from Karm Pesach and putter from being Oyla Regal. Taisus makes drushes to prove such a thing. Vim Kane. Well, if that's true, then someone that finds themselves Tame and is coming close to Pesach or a Yantav that has to be Regal, so he doesn't necessarily have to have a Parduma. Why? He could easily get out of the whole Chiv of Karm Pesach to begin with, or to get out of the Chiv of going to Beis Himish. How? Yiboy, Mafkir Nichsei. He could he could be mafkir all of his nechassim. He has he has real estate. He has properties. He could be mafkir, and if he's mafkir, he's not chayiv in karm pesach. It's not chayiv in being oil regal. So it says Rabbi Yehuda so the, so the third that's used to to bring tahar to the kahanim, it's not super necessary. Another kind can take care of it. I and even the third that that's needed to be matar Yisraelim. So it's also not super necessary. The Yisraelim can can finagle themselves. To become potter from Karm Pesach, to be other regal, that they don't need to become tar to begin with. So really, says Ruch official, the only third, the only things that you that you desperately need paraduma for is kindel for Yom Kippur, because there's only one, that, that there's no other option, and to and and to be matar the kain to make another paraduma, also no other option. But uh, everything else is really unnecessary. So, Mimela, the average Yisrael, since he could avoid being chayv in a Karm Pesach, or be avoid being chayv in being other regal, so uh, it's not necessary. So now it can make a lot of sense why Rav Sajigayin is only counting that third as the mitzvah. Because of Iker inina mitzvah, b'chela ke'efer, shenitil mishmeris. That the Iker mitzvah is really for the third that's kept as a mishmeris. Mishm shem yuch lekahanam gedolim. Because that's used for kahanu gedolim, she yav shalom shalom minyan b'loy ever par. Because they 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 mamish need the par do, and that's a, that's a, that's a something that that uh, that you have to use par do for. You can't you can't avoid it. That's his uh, that's his insight. Yeah. Why is the fact that there's a way to avoid it that you don't need a particular thing? The fact that that's I mean, it's, it's, it's a good question. You cannot write it so right, so so he so so you're right. So the, the, so, the, so, the, so the way the, the way Rabbi Yochum Fischel seems to be learning is that. Rosh Goyen doesn't mean to say, and he even even hints to this at the last at the last line over there, that Rosh Goyen doesn't mean to say that the other thirds are not part of the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to make up paraduma, but for whatever reason, Rosh Goyen wants to highlight which third is the ikker, third of this mitzvah, and to that he says it's the third that's in the chayil because that's the third that's used for things, you know, that uh, are absolutely necessary, and then Mela that's going to be the ikker mitzvah. But you're right, the other ones, 
are still functional. I mean, they, maybe they're not as chosh of a function, or they're not as nece- necessary a function. But but the the aside is what he, what, he's, what, he, what he, well, the way Rabbi Rocham Fischel is learning is that Rosh is not fundamentally disagreeing with the Rambam. The Rambam categorizes the mitzvah of Parduma is ashes prepared for use, and Rosh is agreeing to that. Rosh is just focusing on the third that is that it, that 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 its use is the most chashiv and the most vital. But you're right, and Chadam, the aside of the mitzvah is ashes for use. Now. I, again, first of all, I guess there's a number of problems that come with this. First of all, like why is Rishadjah going making making it more complicated? It's pa- para, para duma. Okay, so I understand that if you compare and contrast these thirds, this third, the use of this third is more chashev and more vital, more necessary. But why are you bechlal dividing it up like that? I mean, like, well, like why do that? It doesn't seem to be necessary bechlal. And, and, and again, also Rishadjah going in a sefer mitzvahs is always dealing with explaining the mitzvah, when, especially when you're defining a mitzvah, you're defining it on a derisa level. On a derisa level, <coughs> it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be that it has to be divided into these three parts. This was, it's hard to know exactly what the source is. Certainly from a derisa level, there has to be some paraduma set as a mishmeris. But to say that this was a unique independent third, that doesn't, it doesn't have to be like that. So for the Rasaj going again, to, to, why is he focusing on the Mishmeris part? It still is unclear. And, and, the, and the truth is, the truth is more than that. The fact that, that let's go back. So the Rash, for example, and Rashi, those were the Rishonim that, that their, their Ruch official is coming from. They were the Rishonim that said that, uh, that to sprinkle the Kain Gadol before Yom Kippur, or a Kain making Lu Paraduma, they would use from that third. Why? The Rosh and Rashi just, the reason why they said that is because of a practical issue. It's like, how do I know, how do I, where, where am I getting Paraduma from a thousand years ago? So the answer is, oh, happens to be there's a third, which is Stam Lumishmaris. So you have now a supply of a thousand year old Paraduma. But, the, but, but it's not the shot that that third was designated for these purposes. The reason why you had that third just sitting in the chayel is because there was a din, that there, was, that, that there should be some section, some percentage of the paraduma that's just sitting here. Now it happens to be once you have a percentage of the paraduma that's sitting here, so I can use a little tiny piece of it, because there's going to be a percentage remaining after I take a little tiny piece of it out, I could use a tiny piece of that out to sprinkle on the kain gadol, because the kain gadol has to be sprinkled from the paraduma from a thousand years ago. So, but, but, but on a derisa level, if you want to really define the purpose of that third, the purpose of that third is not to sprinkle the kain gadol. And it's not to sprinkle the kain for the next part of Duma. The purpose of that third is l'mishmeres, so that it should sit there. It's just there was a side question, which is, happens to be there's another halacha, which is a kain gadol before Yom Kippur, and a kain before paraduma, makes a new paraduma, has to be sprinkled from all the old paradumas that ever exist. So I asked the Rash, and I asked Rashi, where am I getting old paradumas from? Oh, the answer is Otaka. In the Chayil, there's a section of Paraduma ashes that are supposed to, that, that, that have to just sit there untouched. And so that could be, if I, you know, take a little uh, corner off of it, that could be, the rest can, can fulfill that requirement. And that could be my secret stash of old Paradumas. But that's not why it's there. It happens to be a side benefit that now I know where I can find old Paraduma ashes. But why is it there? What it's there is simply to not be used. It's there to be a mishmeris. So, to, so when Rav Sajigun, again, is defining the mitzvah for Medaraisa, and he defines the mitzvah, the mitzvah is the ikr, the section that's the mishmeris. On a Daraisa level, the, the, that, that category that's called the mishmeris, the fact that it's used for kain gadol, that, that's, that's secondary. That's not the main point of what it is. So again, the whole reason why, the, why where Rav Sajigun would be focusing on this particular section of ashes that's used for the most chashivist purpose is uh, uh, difficult to understand. And, and second of all, that category, that section, that's not its purpose. That's not its purpose. Its purpose is to sit there. Again, there could be, now that it's sitting there, uh, you know, I, I, could, I could slowly but surely over the years, like, you know, uh, siphon off from that supply for, for a purpose, which is called making sure the kind gadol and the kain are uh, sprinkled with old ashes from old par, uh, old paradumas, but that's not that's not what it's for. So to say that Rosh Hashanah says 
the reason why he's categorizing that section, that the section that's Lemishmeris Betedr is because of its function. That function that the Rash and Rashi says it was used for was not its primary function. That's Adra, but when they took a little piece off of that section to use for the Kain Gadol, that w- they were depleting the supply of Mishmeris. And, 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 and whatever piece they took off was not Lemishmeris Betedr. So it's like, this, this, so again, the Rash, the Pasha seems to be saying, not like the Raman fundamentally, that the Raman fundamentally said the mitzvah of Paraduma is ashes to be used for tahar. And that's all the sections of the Paraduma, maybe now. It could be the section for using for Yisraelim, the section for Kahanim, and maybe the Mishmaris also could be used, uh, you could siphon off for other, for other purposes, whatever. But, but uh, Rav Sajigayin, the Pashas of Rav Sajigayin seems to be saying, which is again, what Rav Yuchan Fischl is trying to avoid. But the Pashas is, that Rav Sajigayin seems to be learning that the mitzvah of Paraduma, the, 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 the usage of the Paraduma, in terms of actually practically bringing tahara, it's not a mitzvah. It's not a mitzvah. It's halacha, it's a din, it's true, and it could be, it could be uh, vital, it could be necessary, but there's no mitzvah to prepare a paraduma to have ashes to be used for tahara. Rather, the ikr mitzvah is what? Is to process a paraduma for the ashes just to sit there. That's, what, that's the pashas of what Rav Sajigun is saying. <coughs> and again, the reason why he wouldn't say that is again, going back to what I said before, which is that there is no mitzvah to become tar, per se. And the, the, there's no, the, the, you know, again, if a person becomes tar, they don't have to become tar. It's true, Rav Sajigayin, uh, not, Rav Yuch official did p- point out that there are two scenarios where, where paraduma was necessary, the kain gadol for Yom Kippur, right? And uh, preparing a kain for a, n- a new paraduma. But even that is only because we're chayshish, that he's tamay. It's not, it's not like me'ikr adin, you know. It's because we know that there's a concern of tahar, of tom in the world. So male, you do the paraduma. It's not the, you know, again, it's, 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 it's vaiter a toitza, it's a result of there being this phenomenon of, of possible tome. But there should be a mitzvah in tayag of preparing paraduma where Sajigayin seems to learn that again, it's, it's not so much for the practical tahara, but it's just this inning of mishmeras. Which again needs an explanation. Paraduma is, is for Tahara. So it's, uh, again, Mishmeris would, would be Sai uh, Gzir Sakasi. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Over here, unless they go, they already had a time Paraduma, you have more than enough stash to last you a thousand years. If there's still an ending of maybe Paraduma, even so, that would seem to indicate that, again, like maybe a book is saying, that it's not, it's not, there's nothing to do with the Maisa Tahara Shiva. That, that point, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's another good point. It's another good point, right? I guess. I guess the counter argument could be like you never know. Maybe there'll be uh, you know uh, a huge amount of tumma soon, and people will need it. But you're right. Then a chadam. Like if the mitzvah was preparing ashes for the purposes of tar, like actual practical use, then maybe there's a limit. How much you need? Then a chadam. The fact that every part of that's available is mitzvah to process. Maybe means that there's taka like a that uh, there's an Indian of just having. Ashes of Paraduma sitting there. You can make that point for sure. Okay, so let's 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 think about it in the other way. Um, if you take a look at Marmokka number nine, we'll skip Marmokka number eight, it's not necessary for now. Um, so it's like this Marmokka number nine. So this is the Rambam in Hilchas Paraduma, Paragimel Halachadalad. The Rambam over here in Paragimel Halachadalad is this, this talk of discussing this idea of the of the uh, what you call it, the ashes of the paraduma being divided into different sections and so on. So he says like this: Vzeshenit in mechayil. So again, going back to that that third, that third that's kept in the chayil. Hayamuchan umutzna. It was designated and prepared. It was just uh, kept as a mishmeres, just sitting there. Shenemar v'hayisal adas bnei yisrael mishmeres. Malamit shematzniyim mimenu. That that means that every paraduma that's made, a section has to be at least uh, some percentage has to be taken and uh, and removed and and and, and separated. <coughs> By the way, just for Derech Agav, the Rambam, again, not, there's other Rambams that, that are make it more clear. The Rambam happens to be that he disagrees with the Rash and Rashi. He says that that third that was kept in the Chai was untouched. Not, it wasn't used for anything. You couldn't go and take a little piece off uh, for a Kain Gadol for this. It was much untouched. And to, and to prepare for a Kain Gadol, or, or a Kain that's making new Paraduma, they, they would have to keep something from old Paradumas in the other thirds. But uh, but that third that was a mishmeres was a mishmeres. 
So then the Ram continues. And you should know that they would also keep, again, in the Chayel, uh, a, a, a section, a, a percentage of all the old Paradumas that were ever made. The Teisha Paras Adumas Nasu. And says the Ram, you should know, historically, there were nine Paradumas in Jewish history. Mishnitzav Mitzazu, from the time that we were commanded in this mitzvah, at Shechar Bayis at Mishnia, until the Korban Bayis Sheni. And he says the whole thing. Mishayna Asa Moshe Rabbeinu. The first one was made by Moshe. Shnia Asa Ezra. Ezra Seifer made the second one. Veshava Me Ezra and Churban Abayis. Seven Paradumas from Ezra until the end of the Churban Mesa Migdash. So that's eight altogether, right? One Moshe, one Ezra, and seven after that till the Churban Mesa Migdash. That's, that's, um, that's, uh, that's nine. Vasiris Yasa Melech HaMashiach. Meheri Yigala. And the tenth one will be made by Mashiach. He should be revealed very quickly. There you go. That's the Rambam. Now, there's a number of problems with this Rambam. First of all, what do I need to know this historical fact of how many Paradumas there were? Now, the truth is, the, the Rambam is not making this up. It's coming from the Mishnah Paraduma. So the Mishnah records it. Now, the, the truth is, Mishnahis record uh, historical events. Mishnahis, Mishnahis called stories. They, they, they record all sorts of things. So for a Mishnah to record a historical phenomenon, that there were ten paradumas in Klai Yisrael's history, nine until now, and tenth with Mashiach, okay, Mishnahis do that. But the Rambam, every single word in the Rambam is halach lamaisa. What, what do we need to know that there were nine paradumas so far, and the tenth is going to be with the coming of Mashiach? Number one. Number two, why would the Rambam, why does the Rambam feel compelled to say, at the very end, Meher Yigola? Meher Yigola. Stam, mention Mashiach, Meher Yimein Omein. Like, why, why, why do you have the again, Every word is halacha. So the truth is, a lot of Acharim do point this out, that you see from this, a halacha, which is, that you mention Mashiach, you have to, it's, if you misspell it, then it should be Meherah. But again, why here? Why here? Why Vashkoch HaPrat this over here in Yelchus Paraduma? And more than that, the Rambam in, the, the, the Rambam take, the, the, uh, like I said, this idea of the Paraduma, the, there were nine altogether and ten with Mashiach, again, it's, it's from Mishnais and Paraduma. <clears throat> but the context of when the Mishnah mentions this in the Seches Parah is not the same context as what the Rambam is saying over here. The Mishnah in the Seches Parah talks about this. It, men- it makes this historical point in a practical context because the Mishnah over there is saying the following idea. It's talking about that, again, like, I, like I've been saying, that every kind God will frame Kippur or a kind before making a new paraduma has to be sprinkled with all the old paradumas, says the Mishnah. And let's say they didn't have all the paradumas. Let's say they only had eight. So the Mishnah says that you do eight. And if, let's say you don't have all eight, you have seven, then you do seven. You know, seven, six, and so on. And the Mishnah says, where am I coming with these numbers from? Eight, nine, what am I talking about? So it says the Mishnah, because you should know that there's been nine paradumas in Jewish history, and the tenth will be with Mashiach. So the reason why the Mishnah lists the numbers nine is because it's talking about the halacha that you have to sprinkle on the kain gadol and so on with all paradumas. And its point is, if you don't have all nine, eight, seven, six, five, and so on. The Rambam, if that's where the Rambam applied this mission, this halacha, that would kind of make sense too. Because the Rambam would just be modeling the mission in, in para. What the Rambam does, he takes the idea that the mission in para says and, a, and puts it in a, in a halacha that's, uh, that's irrelevant. The, the Rambam puts this not in the halach of, of, of sprinkling the ashes on a new kain gadol, or for, Kippur or, or for a new paraduma. He's talking about the halach of when a paraduma is made, take a percentage of those ashes and put it in the chayel. If they did that or not in paraduma number five, that has, what, what, what does it do with, I, there's nothing I can do about it. The Rambam, what's the what's Rambam saying that you should know when every paraduma is processed, a, per, a per, percentage of it is placed in the chayel. And they did that with every kind God, with every paraduma. They did that with Moshe Rabbeinu's paraduma. They did that with Ezra's, and altogether there were nine paradumas so far. Lamai nafkimin. What are you telling me this for? And let's say, let's say, they, let's say uh, in paraduma number eight, they didn't do that. Now, what am I supposed to do now? I don't know, like, it's enough. Again, in the, in the Mishnah, the Mishnah used this historical process for something practical to tell me that if you didn't have, all, if you didn't use all nine, then you're okay. But that's not the halach of the Ram is, 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 is using this in context of. The halach of the Ram is using this in context of is this idea of taking a percentage of the, of the Efer Parah and keeping it designated separately. The fact that they did this nine times, it, this, this, it's irrelevant for this halach. There's nothing, there's nothing added in this, uh, there's, uh, there's nothing added by knowing this right now. 
So, so the, the, the only reason to know this is for another halacha, that when you're sprinkling the kain gadol with all the ever paras, you should know in the chayil you'll find some of all paradumas. But that's not where the Raman puts it. That's where the Mishnah and Parah puts it. That's not where the Raman puts it. So Raman is, is just, is just it, well, the Raman seems, in other words, from this, the Raman want, just wants us to know this idea. That's the point. Even if it doesn't have any practical application in the context of where the Raman places it, the Raman just wants us to know that there's an Indian of ashes being placed in the Shmeris, and in that context, you have to know that over there in the Chayil, there's a Mishmeris of all Paradumas, and that's also going to be where the tenth Paraduma is going to be, with the coming of Mashiach, Meher Yigal. What's the, what's the message over here? What's the point? <coughs> okay, so we have no choice. Paraduma is a Chayik, Sisri Tyrus. So you have to, you have no choice. You have to talk about that a little bit. There's a there's a, an unbelievable. Um, I, I've quoted this this before, but it's just every time I look at it, it's mamish like it's unbelievable. We have in the in the writings of Rachel the sefer that we have. Uh, it's one of the volumes of the Rachel, the the green ones, you know, Eitzris Rachel. It's over there by your Friedlander. So over there, there's something that's called Drush the Indian Akiva, a drush that the Rachel wrote regarding hope, hope, and it's a whole Torah that the uh, that the Rachel wrote regarding hope. And it's an unbelievable thing. Let, 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 let's explain. Tumas Meis, Tumas Meis, that a paraduma is coming to be Matara from, the Tumas that a paraduma is Matara from is a Tumas that comes from death, right? Death is described in Chumash, even in the very beginning, the, the, when Adam and Chavah sinned and they came and they were punished with mortality, the punishment of death is also mm-hmm. coupled with sadness, right? Be tzavu in teichlena, be tzavu in teichlena. A person in Lolena passes away, there's a miss of Avelos, which is a meaning of sadness. Nisa, there's a certain hopelessness and a yish that is one in, one in, uh, completely one with the end of death itself. Death, death means yish, death means yish. Death, death, death results in absolute despair and absolute, you know, hopelessness. And in the nefesh, that's what you, that's what Nisa is. Tomas, Tomas Meis is. Rabbi Nachman writes this in a few places. That Tomas Meis is the Toma of Yish. It is the Toma of hopelessness. The secret of what's the secret of Paraduma? The secret of Paraduma is, as we're going to see in a second from the Rachel, the secret of Paraduma is the Indian of hope. That, that's the site of Paraduma. That's the Indian of Paraduma. Paraduma is Matai or Tumas Meis, because the Indian of Paraduma is to, again, not, not, we don't necessarily, it's, it's not like uh, something that we could explain. It's a site. But the Tchunas the, HaNefesh, the, 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 the that's awakened, that's aroused, that's resurrected, by the Bechina, by the Indian of Parduma, is this Indian of hope. Now, to give, to give a deeper root of where this is coming from, so uh, you know, I've mentioned this many, many times, the, the Arizal said that in the beginning, right before Maise Breshis, Atuhu Achlali Nivra Oilam, the existed before the world, right? And so, <coughs> before creation, all there was was the infinite light of the Rabbanu Shalom. Chai V'Kayim, Rabbanu Shalom is alive. Rabbanu Shalom is alive. Chai V'Kayim. What was the first, what, how did creation take place? So again, without explaining, but the, the reason I said, the way, the, the way creation took place is through an Indian of the Rabbanu Shalom Kivyachal, Kivyachal, hiding, concealing, constricting himself, creating a halal upon him. The way the Rizal describes the mashal, that the Rizal describes is, is, a, is, a, is a, a sphere, an empty sphere, an empty sphere. And in, it, in this empty sphere, what is, what is there? All the, all the, um, raw material, so to speak, for finite reality. Now, finite reality is hopeless. Hopeless. Because finite reality means, by its very definition, finite means it has a gvul. It means you know your limit, and there's nothing beyond your limit. So this halal ponoi is the root of all that is dead, of all that is dead, 
of all that is finite, of all that is hopeless. And this is why it's in the shape of a circle. As we'll see from it for a sec, by, in a second by the Ramchal, a circle means, I mean, it's, it's funny, because sometimes a circle can, dis, can be a description, even the Rizal also uses this in that context, re, uh, the circle can be a, 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 a shape that's reflective of some somewhat infinite. But paradoxically, and very often it's like this in Yiddishkeit, but paradoxically, Igulim, the ending of the circle in this context also means something that's closed. There's nowhere else to go. It doesn't. It doesn't grow. It doesn't increase. All everything, the, the two ends are bound to each other. In other words, does is does. So, it, to a certain degree, that shape of a circle is reflective of the, of the finality of it. Of like, it's not going anywhere. There's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to increase. Thus, you know, offer ata or offer tashiv. The circle of life. The circle of life is not a, a not a happy. That's not a happy circle. That means <laughs> beginning and ends are finished. You're stuck in that loop. So the Rizal said, but the amazing mystery that t- took place in the next moment is, the Rizal said, the Rabbani Shalom, then the infinite, the, the, the Rabbani Shalom Kedyochel took a ray of infinite light that preceded that circle, a kav, that's the language of the Rizal, a kav, that descends into that sphere of, f- of finity, that sphere of, of hopelessness, and that kav enters in, and that kav introduces into that place of finite a memory, a, a, a sense of infinite. Now, it's not infinite, but mm-hmm. al-kalpanim, it, it reintroduces into that sphere just enough of a taste of a shirayim of what, of what was in order, to, in order to produce life, and an arena in which there could be true Avaidis Hashem. And as we're taught in Sifr Chassidus, the, the, the ultimate purpose of Avaidis Hashem is to transcend the circle itself and to return to a certain degree to what was even before the Tzimtzum, even before the constriction, and to return to truly experience infinite. This is something we've talked about many, many times, in, in, you know, let's say, you know, the Indian of... of uh, you know, the, the famous mashal that I mentioned from, from the Balatanya of, of wine poured out of a barrel and then ultimately being poured back into the barrel. The tachlis of Avodis Hashem, and this is a big yisad in Sefer Chassidus in, in, in the Pnei Satira, and it's not something that you necessarily find openly and clearly in the Kis Fiyari, but in Api Chassidus, this is how it's understood, is that creation as we, life as we know it is a result of the introduction of that kav to that sphere. But that's only to allow Avodah Hashem. Once we are now engaged in reality, in that, because of that union, now our Avodah begins, and our Avodah is to bring, is, is to go deeper than, than, and to go higher than just that kav. So in other words, in other words, what we're saying is, is that the ending of that kav being introduced into that circle is what? It's just to give hope. It's just to give hope. The life that, that is in that circle is a life that's hopeless, a life that is meaningless, a life that cannot move beyond itself. It's completely finite. And the goal is, and, 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 and what we have to get, what the Rav wants is, Adra, we want Yidin, and we want Avodah Hashem in that sphere, to believe and to know and to actually accomplish that they, that beyond those limits. How do we transition? How do we get the, the reality of that Simpson, the reality of that sphere, to buy into Avodah Hashem, to then bring them to transcend all limitations by introducing them, by introducing into that circle, into that sphere, the Kav. And what the Kav does is that it doesn't take everything all the way to the highest place, but it gives hope. It gives, it gives reality as it's created by that sphere, which is limited and finite, it gives it a hope and a, and a it gives it, based on a distant memory of what was, but it gives it a hope and a belief that it can transcend its boundaries. In other words, the inyan of the kav is the inyan of tikva. And tikva hopefulness is what brings things out of death back into life. It brings things out of death back into life. It, it, is, it is the source within which all finite reality that is existing within this space of the Chalala Panoi is able to function 
properly, healthfully, happily, in a way that will bring them to an even higher place than the halal upon it. But in order for them to engage in Avodah Hashem, to bring them to a higher place than the halal upon it, they have to have hope. They have to believe in, in their potential to get beyond the halal upon it. And what allows them to have that hope is the kav that descends into the halal upon it. Is this, is this clear? So in other words, in, the, what, 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 in this language, in other words, what we're doing is as follows. We're taking that description of the Arizal, of an empty space with a ray of light in it, and then everything, everything all, all elements are created off of that. What we're, what we're, what we're, what we're al-pi chasidis, that is only stage one of the process. Al-pi chasidis, we're taught that the stage two is, okay, now that you exist in this empty space and you're being enlivened, by that ray of, of, of the, by the Kav, now what are you doing? What's your purpose? Well, in Chesidus we're taught that the purpose is to now do mitzvahs and ma'is and taivim and to draw into reality something that's much deeper than just that Kav, really mamish to experience what was before the entire constriction itself. But because you went through life in that sphere of constriction as a finite entity, when, you're, when, you, when you return to that ocean of infinity, there's enough of you to experience the delight of that, of that, of that ocean. That's the that we've mentioned many, many times. That's, that's what you see in Hasidus. Translating that into the nefesh. Translating that into nefesh, what it means is as follows, is that that sphere, we, the existence of that empty space, is a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Like, this, I'm stuck. Whatever the thing is that you're stuck in, that's called experiencing life just as that empty, the chalal upon it. And then, but the tachlis is to break through whatever the minih is. And that would be described as getting past the chalal aponoi and returning to the ocean of infinite that came before the constriction. But how do you break through that minih? Well, what you have to have, what you have to have before, in order to break through that minih is hope in your ability to break through that minih. And you have to believe in yourself and believe in the possibility of you breaking through that minih to then break through it. That's called the kav entering the chalal upon it. And so you have three stages. You have the chalal upon it. That's called hopelessness. You have the kav entering into the chalal upon it. That's called tikva. That's called hope. And now you could actually do your avoida, which is called transcending and, and, and returning to the infinite light of the Rabbanu Shalom that came before the chalal upon it. That's called breaking through the mini. This, 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 this is true in the nefesh, and this is true in, in, in spiritual history. It's the kav, and then avodis Hashem for 6,000 years and so on, eventually leads to us being able to transcend the chalal and to return to the ocean of infinite that was. You follow this? And this is the inning of the paraduma. The paraduma is the kav entering the chalal aponoi. The holy in the paraduma is p'chies amesim. Once you become tar with the paraduma, now you're avoided again. So, so the person is Tommy with Tumas Meis. Tommy with Tumas Meis means that they're stuck in helplessness and hopelessness. They're stuck in the Chalal Aponai. And what they need to do is to bring a carbon based amygdash. They need to eat Truma. They need to be, bring a carbon Pesach. They need to break through that Menia. But in order to break through that Menia, they first need to have hope to resurrect themselves. They need to have the Kav enter into their Chalal Aponai to give them hopefulness. That's what the Paradum is. The whole secret of the Paraduma is to make the Jewish nefesh hopeful in its, in its possibility of being able to get through its minis. That's exactly what the Paraduma is about. And because of this, the Paraduma is a secret, it's a sight. It's metame satayrim, umatar satameim. Hope is, is a phenomenon that requires a minion, right? So it's like, to be hopeful, like, you don't want to be hopeful. Because to be hopeful means that there's something that, that, that you're lacking and you're hoping to get it. Well, I'd rather just, just have it. So uh, hope itself is something that, both, that, that, that is both pos positive and has a negative connotation at the same time. Because hope means that you don't have what you want, but at least you're hopeful that you can get it. It's, 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 it's something, it's, it's within the, 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 the dimension of the Chalal Aponoi, but al Kalpanim, it gives the reality of the Chalal Aponoi a strength to get over itself and to get beyond itself. That's called tikva, that's called hope. That's the secret of the paraduma. Because of this, let's translate this in halacha. Because of this, the inning of the paraduma is, 
says Rabbi Nisajigon, again, it's, it's still a pella, but Rabbi Nisajigon is saying that the Iker Mitzvah is not so much the ashes that are used to be mitar, but it's, it's, it's the ashes that are designated, that are always sitting there, that are always sitting there as a, as, as a link in this historical chain that continues on. This is why the Rambam mentions to us specifically that it's important to know. In Hilchas Paradum, it's important to know that there were 10 Paradumas, and in, in, there, there are 10, right? And uh, there was by Moshe Rabbeinu, Ezra, and another seven, and so on. And there'll be a 10th with Mashiach, Meher Yigal. <coughs> this Indian of having the, these connections of Paraduma is connected, it's, it's, it's reflective of the side of the Kav. Because what's a line? A line is one, one. It's something that's that's running through time. You know, a, a a line through uh, through history is the paradumas. All the paradumas are a direct line running through Jewish history from Moshe Rabbeinu all the way till Yemei Mashiach. Why is that? Why is that fundamental? in not only for us to know, but in mitzvah's paraduma, again, because what Rosh Hashanah is saying is that the fundamental mitzvah paraduma is dafka, that part of the paraduma, that's not necessarily practical for Yankel and, 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 and Shmerel, but it's the part of the paraduma that is there, along with all the other paradumas, that's going to be there for all the future paradumas. The whole in of paraduma, the mitzvah paraduma, is to, is to create, is to reflect this kav, this line, that descends through the Chalal Aponoi, and just as it descends in space through the Chalal Aponoi, it descends through time, through Jewish history. Jewish history is also something that is Kivyachal, that seems to be dead, and seems to be lifeless. There's such a thing as Yerida Sadaris. Things, things are stuck. You're stuck in, uh, you know, Ein kol chavesh tachas Hashem, as Shlomo said. Ma shehoyahu what was, is going to be. History is like a loop, it repeats itself. But this Indian of a Kav, that's, that runs through history, that's the Indian of the Kav that goes to the Chalal Pani, and that is the secret, that is the secret of Paraduma. Therefore, the Indian of Paraduma is itself the site of hope, and therefore part of Paraduma is, to, is as the Raman points out, that the tenth one is going to be with Mashiach, Meher Yigal. Because the Indian of hoping for Mashiach, that's, that's the Indian of Paraduma. Because the whole Indian of Paraduma is, is, the, is the site of hope. And hope is the Indian of this Kav, and that's what the Kav is, that line, that 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 travels through a a a you know travels through space and conceptually travels through time and it travels through the nefesh. So the the hopefulness that the Rambam describes in in the last one being Mashiach Meheri Yagala, that is that is the line traveling in the nefesh. Similar to the line traveling through Jewish history of Moshe and Ezra and seven and so on, and so That's and coming from the the kav going through the chalal aponi in space, huh? Okay, the ah, very good. It's kept <clears throat> in the in in, in, the, in the, the chayil, and the chayil is again the word chal is the chalal aponi with a yud in the middle, right? The yud is that nakuda, that nakuda of, of hope. That's the <clears throat> the kav that's that's reflected in the uh, in the chalal aponi. That's the set of hope. Other places where there's a Yosher and Eagle is also in the Yosher is always the Makrava, and goes without saying. Yeah. The Eagle is seen as the higher Bechina, but static, but it's higher Bechina. So, this is, so this, uh, so I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. This is something that, that threw me, uh, it, it confused me a lot because uh, years ago, so I didn't have a background in, in real Pneus Atari, I learned Sivich Chesidis. And in Chesidis, the term Igulim is always associated. With makif surrounding, like there's, there's two terms in, in this farm. You'll find or makif, a surrounding light, and or makif always means encompassing infinite. It's a mila. Or makif is a mila, right? And then you have another term that's, that that the farm use, which is called igulam and yoyish. So there's there's two there's two uh, uh, two par- parallel languages. Or makif or pnimi. Right, surrounding light, inner light. Our makif is greater. Our pnimi is more constricted, and then you have igulim, circles, and yoisher, lines. And in 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 Sivir Chassidus, like Rabbi Tzadik in many many places, in Chabad Chassidus also, they're they're interchangeable. Igulim is uh, is kavaldik. That's like an our makif, and yoisher is more constricted. That's like an our pnimi. But in the Kisviari, 
these are two different languages. There's a, there's a lot of Torah we have. That's a discussion itself, where Chassidus is coming from and, and, the, and these relationships. But in, in classic terminology of the Rizal, Igulim and Yoisher is something else. Igulim is reflective of what we're talking about, this closed circuit, Yish, you can't, you stuck in it. Uh, you know, uh, um, you know, every, every, like, I, I, like, like the, you know, one way to think of it is like, like the, the carbon that we're made of, it's like always been here, always will be here. It's just comes and goes. That's what Leshem talks about. He grew into a little bit. It's like the same mentality. Say it again. Right. Right. Well, he, right. He says. He says. Come out. Roiv of Zar Kadosh and is not talking about Igulim. It's always about Yosher because Yosher is where the Avoid is. So th- this term again, it's in parentheses over here, but it's coming from that. It's a difference in terminology. But let, let, let let's just finish off quickly before it uh, before it gets. Oh, it's already super late. But okay, let's just finish off. So it's just a couple lines in the Rochal Marmok number ten. Jush bin Akiva again. It's just beautiful. Lishua. We're not going to explain it, but these are the words. Lishua Slakivisi Hashem. Right. That's the pasuk. In Parshas Vayechi, Reishis Habriya Betikva, the beginning of creation is Betikva, with hope. Shakal Tachtonim Mitzapim L'Shifa Sal Yoyinim, all lower reality is waiting and hopeful for the Hashpo coming from above. Ay Dei Tefila, Ay Shir, Ksiv Reishis Boralakim, Ain Reishis El Tikva. It's a new drasha. Ain Reishis El Tikva, Ain Hatsimsim Osoi, Kim L'Tzapa Sheyichnas Bei Kav Ein Tzayf Baruch Hu. The whole meaning of the of the Tzimsim, the empty space. Is just to, to prepare it for the kav to enter. And this kav means hopefulness. It's everything we're talking about. The beginning is, is called Yir Hashem. Yir Hashem means you need, you're desperate, you need. And that, that's, why you're, that's why you're in a state of Yir. The beginning of the Rabbanishon's wisdom is and so on and so forth. Kivo means a reflection of the kav that keeps on going, that has potential right there. But a circle means constricted, closed, not going anywhere. That's the site of Eagle and the Yosha. No, that's the site of Paraduma. When Rabbi Nachman said, you know, Ein Liyayish, Ein Liyayish, it's an avo- the avoid of Ein Liyayish is the avoid of Paraduma. That's the Harat, that's the Harat. Tomas Meis is this Indian of Tikva. Once you have that hope, now you could now you could bring Karm Pesach. Now you could do your avoid, and you could get out of you can always go to infinite. But you have to have that hope initially. Okay, we should be to become hopeful and uh